this video series, we're going to retopologize a semi-complex object with multiple subcomponents, such as this football cleat. We'll use the manual retopology tools for the most part, where we have maximum control over our topology. However, on the simpler subcomponents, such as the shoelaces, we can use auto retopology for that and get a relatively good result. So let's go ahead and get started here. You could elect to use a primitive from the models palette here to use as a starting point for your retopology project. And actually that's what I did here. I used a primitive like this. And bring it into the scene. I'll scale it up. Scale along the x axis. And it's somewhat transparent, so you can see through this little preview object. That's really what it is at this point until I hit the enter key. It's essentially just a uh, kind of a proxy or preview object. And then hit enter. It's asking, do I want to snap this object to the voxel or model beneath it? In this case, no. And one of the first things you'll notice is it creates a new layer for you. At this point, you could go ahead and rename it if you like. But what I did is I just uh, started box modeling using uh, edge selections like this. You start off in auto mode and you just click on the sub object you want to start with. And then you can choose the transform tool. You drop the transform tool by hitting the escape key and if I want to select a polygon and just click in the center of the polygon or just hover over an edge and click on that or a vertice. You can also choose your different sub objects here at the top of your UI and you can assign hotkeys that are close to what you have in your preferred 3D application. So for example in 3ds Max vertices would be one Edges two, I think faces would be four. So you could assign hotkeys by hitting the end key on your keyboard to assign it to those particular subobjects. Nevertheless, what I want to show is that sometimes when you have a moderately complex or a highly complex object, you may want to try and map it out first. And you would do that using the strokes tool. With this particular object, this first example here, I'll go back to it and let me first select the UV map so it's a bit more visible. And you can see that it was simply box model. There was not a lot of concern for making the topology flow with the contours of much of this shoe, such as this area here in the ankle area, and also the stripes on the sides. Sometimes the area is not extruded or recessed enough to warrant that. But there are some areas where you may want to add some topology that flows with the contours, such as the area where the nylon meets the leather. And also this area toward the back, it's uh, deep enough that you can notice some stair stepping even with normal maps. So if you're going to do a product shot or something like that, you want to be a little bit more concerned with the topology. So that's what we'll do here. We will try to map everything out with the strokes tool. Also made this one contiguous mesh previously, but here I'll make it two separate meshes, one for the top and one for the sole. So let's get started. Now I'll double click on this topmost layer here and I'll name that cleats. Two. I've emphasized this point in other videos, but I want to repeat it once again, and that is the versatility of the Strokes tool. It gives you full manual control while still being something of an auto retopology tool in its own right. Because if you've seen some of the videos about auto retopology, you have the ability to go in and apply some guides to tell the application where you want your edge flow. With the strokes tool, that's essentially what you're establishing as well. But 
as long as you have crossing lines where you have the four edges, uh, 3D Cut will go ahead and create polygons there. The first thing I want to do here is I want to try and hide all the objects that I'm not going to start with. So uh, what I want to do is hide the shoelaces. That's one. And all the sole elements here. Okay. So with that done, I'm going to go ahead and use the Strokes tool. And obviously I want to have some edge flow going along the major contours here. And it looks like I have something. I'm just going to choose clear. Somehow I had a, a stroke hanging out in space there. So yeah, let's go ahead and kind of map out our contours. So I can just click and basically brush this area. As you're creating the strokes, you want to make sure that you have enough spline points density or enough points along the spline so that it can closely follow the surface along a major contour or maybe a change in angle, things of that sort. Because once you hit enter, sometimes you may find that if you don't have enough points, it doesn't give you any geometry. Okay, so the other option instead of brushing is I can hold the control key and just click on one point and it will continue. And as I'm holding the control key, I'm able to just uh, lay down the points manually. Okay, hold the control key and start again. So if you don't have quite the steady hand, you can always just use this to be a little bit more precise. Let me add one more here. And so the orange color indicates that you have a full closed path. Okay. So I'm not going to be concerned with uh, creating any cross sections here at this stage. So I'll probably go ahead and hold the control key. Lay down my points here. Do the same over here. Looks like they did not join. Maybe. Yeah, they did. Okay. We're good. So it looks like a few of these fell over this little edge here. So I'll just click on the point and bring it back. You can see how 3D Coat tries to basically re-smooth this entire curve. So even as you're making an adjustment here, it tries to uh, conform elsewhere. All right. Okay, so obviously. I can make a path here as well. I'll hold the control key. Hold the control key again. I'll continue my point. And I'll start out here. And that closes those two together. I'll do the same thing here.
So the advantage of this, again, is it's almost like a puzzle that you're putting together. And so it allows you to work as you think. You don't have to know it all exactly how you're going to lay it out from the very beginning. You can kind of map it out as you go. And it's simply a more forgiving and flexible way of working because these other tools where you go polygon by polygon, if you don't like the direction you're heading, then that means you have to delete polygons and start over again. So I know I want a row of polys along this major contour here, so I'll just start by the eyelet. Hold control key. I'm using a space pilot to navigate while I'm laying these points down, so that's one of the major advantages of using 3D Coach. 3D connection device support really helps a lot when you're uh, retopologizing a model. start a stroke here and even as I'm brushing I can move about a model if I come off I can still rotate about and place it where I need okay, so I'll hold the control key click on that point and just continue click to lay down a point all right so for the remainder of this video i'm going to speed up the playback in order to try and keep this video as concise and as brief as possible when you want to make a straight line you can hold the shift key in order to constrain it in 45 degree increments All right, we're going to stop right here and pick up in the next video in part two. Stay tuned and thank you for watching.